If you're in the tropics with friends in temperate areas, you know that their farming techniques won't work for you. The tropics are different from the temperate zones, and cultivating tropical crops can require more planning and some unique strategies. Keep watching to find out some of the little-known challenges and solutions involved in tropical farming. So how is tropical agriculture different? While hypothetically it may be possible to grow the same food all year long, in practice there are a variety of factors that decide what seasons crops are grown in. The soil in the tropics is different from temperate zones, and this has a big impact on tropical crop production. The soil in the tropics tends to be clay-like, acidic, and heavy. Tropical plants tend to be more sensitive to the amount of daylight they receive, and tropical climates have different day lengths than temperate zones do. The pattern of weather in rainy seasons is vastly different. When most people think of the tropics, they think of monsoon season. The weather in the tropics can range from overly dry, droughty conditions, to excessively rainy. Tropical crops are unique, and so are the methods of producing them. The methods involved in tropical crop production tend to be on the smaller scale than temperate. There is a different layout of crops, and thus the tropics require different techniques than your friends and temperate zones might use. Let's review some of the challenges of tropical farming. First, we have insects. Because of the lack of a cold winter season, insects in tropical climates are prolific. While in temperate climates, the crops receive a bit of a break as insects tend to go away during the cold winter months, in tropical climates, the insect population runs rampant. But the key to controlling an ever-expanding population of insects does not lie in the use of heavy chemicals and pesticides. Over time, you'll end up using increasingly large amounts of chemicals and getting a less impressive result. The insects can grow used to the pesticides commonly used. Rather, tropical farmers should focus primarily on building up the population of natural predator insects on their farm. These natural predator insects will naturally control the population of pests that negatively affect your crops. Your goal should not be to completely eliminate pests, but to keep them at a low enough level that they do not affect the success of your farm. In tropical climates, Many governments provide educational programs to tropical farmers to provide them with information on managing the insects and pests on their farm in this manner. It is one of the key components in having a successful tropical farm. So tropical soil is rich, right? Well, this is actually a misconception. People imagine with the lush look of rainforest and the warm and humid climate that the soil would be quite rich and therefore it would be relatively easy to grow. But in fact, farming with tropical soil presents a number of challenges. Firstly, the soil is incredibly acidic. As you may know, plants themselves are also quite acidic, and they actually depend upon a difference in acidity between themselves and the soil to absorb nutrients. When plants are growing in acidic soil, they are less able to absorb the nutrients with their roots. Secondly, the clay that tends to be a large component of tropical soil lacks the structure to keep nutrients in. Even when nutrients are added into the soil while farming, rather than be absorbed, they will simply wash away. With the amount of rain tropical climates receive, the nutrients are washed out of the soil particularly quickly. Thirdly, the heat combined with the humidity in the tropical climate causes dead organisms in the soil to decompose at a faster rate. This actually affects the soil's ability to retain nutrients even quicker as the nutrients are released quickly and then washed away before being absorbed because of the acidity and the clay. But why is the soil so acidic? Tropical soil has high levels of aluminum. Aluminum is a metal found in Earth's crust as well as all soils in both temperate and tropical climates. Aluminum is actually toxic for plants, inhibiting growth. However, in a temperate climate, it does not affect the soil as much because the more acidic the soil is, the more aluminum causes its negative effects. In tropical climates, aluminum toxicity is a much bigger problem. There are several solutions to aluminum toxicity in farming soil. Firstly, farmers can add a lime to the soil. This counters the acidity and makes the aluminum non-reactive. The downside of the strategy of adding lime is that it can be costly. The second method to reduce aluminum toxicity is called slash and burn. The farmer can burn the existing crops and the ash will counter the acidity. This is a temporary fix. The soil will gradually become more and more acidic again, limiting crops and causing the farmer to have to repeat the slash and burn again and again. An interesting thing is that you can recognize the aluminum by the color of the soil in these tropical areas. The yellow soil color in the humid climate comes from oxidized aluminum. Well, what about temperate strategies to improve soil conditions, such as composting? Composting is literally taking a mixture of decomposed plant and food waste and mixing it with the soil in order to enhance the nutrient process. Profile. Composting is used in temperate areas to improve the soil by fertilizing it, conditioning it, and introducing beneficial microbes that help to fight pathogens. The problem is, as discussed, tropical soil does not retain the nutrients from decomposed materials nor added nutrients. This means composting is not a very effective.
effective method for improving the soil in a tropical climate. Although it can still be useful, it's much more limited in its capacity than in a more temperate zone. So then how do the plants grow in rainforest? Is the soil better there? In those areas with dense vegetation, such as rainforest, there's actually a somewhat gross secret to the prolific growth of tropical plants. On the surface of the soil, there's a layer of dead and rotting animals and plant matter. The soil does not retain the nutrients from these very well, but during rainstorms, the rain washes the nutrients directly to the plants and they absorb them without using the soil. Well then, what does help the crops grow when farming in tropical climates? Crop rotation. When one crop is planted over and over again in the same soil, the insects, weeds, and plant diseases that affect that crop can build up over time and begin to cause more and more damage, eventually affecting the production. By rotating the crops to plant different ones in a given location, instead of planting the same crop in the same place, farmers can break the cycle. In this way, crop rotations help to lower damage from insects, weeds, and plant disease to any given crop. Some pests might be attracted to one crop, but not to another. By taking away their food supply, the pests will lose interest and move on to another area. By constantly rotating the crops, farmers can achieve an overall lower level of pests. Usually, several crops are planted within a rotation. In addition to the benefits of reducing pest populations on a farm, crop rotation also increases the quality of the soil. This is because crops require different nutrients to grow. If you are planting the same crop over and over, it will deplete the soil the specific nutrients it needs. By carefully rotating crops, the nutrients that are being drawn from the soil are more balanced. Next, pioneering crops. Pioneering crops are crops you can plant specifically to improve the quality of your soil. They are not crops that you will typically grow for food, but specific plants and trees that can alter the soil content and recondition it to prepare it for the food crops you plan to plant later. Pioneering crops are helpful to use in places that have received a heavy rainfall that has eroded the top layer of soil where the most nutrients tend to be available. To repair the eroded soil, you can plant pioneering crops and let them do their magic. And now the secret weapon of tropical farming, small-scale irrigation. You may not think that more water is needed in the tropics, a place well known for its rainy seasons. However, sometimes the rain does not occur at the right times or consistently enough to benefit a farming practice. In addition, some drier areas that receive heavy rain are actually unable to absorb the moisture. The water just runs off the dry soil because there is so much of it at once. This is where small-scale irrigation practices can benefit tropical farming. The excess rainwater that runs off the soil can be collected and used for the crops. There are three main methods of small-scale irrigation. First, water harvesting pits. A water harvesting pit is one of the most basic types of small-scale irrigation. All you have to do is dig holes into your fields and line them with plastic tarps. The rainwater will run off the dry soil and collect in the plastic-lined holes. You can then use the collected water to irrigate your crops. This works well in hilly or mountainous areas as the water will run off quickly. And finally, the bucket drip irrigation method. Bucket drip irrigation is exactly what it sounds like. You hang a bucket from a pole and attach a hose to the bottom of the bucket. The hose is then cut with numerous holes and stretched over where crops are planted. When the bucket is filled with water, the water just drips out of the holes in the hose to water the crops. This is a simple but effective irrigation strategy as it ensures the crops receive equal amounts of water. And that's all for today. Thanks for watching.